thank God because today has come again. We have one week every year to host our father, and we are most glad that he's here again with us. 2023 Family Reviver. It's my pleasure to welcome our father, Reverend Mike Babatunde, from His Grace Anointed Teaching Ministry in Lagos. Can we put our hands together for him and say, Daddy, you are welcome. Put your hands together for the Lord very powerfully. Amen. Praise the Lord. We give thanks to God who has given us the privilege to be alive today and to listen to him. It's a great privilege to join together with God's people and to worship in his presence. We know that in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forever. I pray that the Lord who has brought you to this worship, he will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to turn to somebody and tell the person, wait. Watch. And wait. Can you say it again? Wait. Watch. And wait. Turn to another person and say it to the person. Wait. Watch. And wait. That's what I will be sharing with you this morning. On this matter of marriage. I will continue from that in the evening when I will be speaking to the people in the second session of this service. We'll be looking at something entirely different. But this morning, wait, watch, and wait. Let's spell wait. Everybody want to go. W-A-I-T. Let's spell watch. W-A-T-C-H. Let's spell way. All right. I just want to be sure that you understand what I have spoken. Shall we turn our Bibles to the book of Georges? Chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. Please give it to us from the amplified version of the Bible. So that we can read from verse 1 up to verse 14 or 15. Judges chapter 9. We want to read from verse 1 up to verse 16 and I prefer that we take the reading from the amplified version of the Bible all of us let's go together one two go now Abimelech the son oh is it Georges no I want Joshua sorry ha I don't know how Georges enter my brain Maybe there's a message in Judges, but not for this morning. Maybe when I will be speaking in the course of the week. Joshua 9, 1 to 16. All right, all of us, let's go together. Now, when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan, in the hill country, and in the low land at the western edge of the hills of Judea, and all along the coast of the great Mediterranean, See toward Lebanon, the Etite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Evite, and the Jebusite heard 
of this army and is victorious over Jericho and I. Aha. Uh -huh. They gathered together with one purpose to fight with Joshua and with Israel. Verse 3. But when the people of Gibeon, the Evites, had what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, verse 4, they too acted craftily and cunningly, and set out and took along provisions, but took one out sacks on their donkeys and wine skins, leather bottles, that were worn out and split open and patched together. Verse 5. Worn out and patched sandals on their feet and worn out clothes and all their supply of food was dry and had turned to crumbs. They went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, We have come from a far country so now make a covenant or treaty with us. Verse 7. But the men of Israel said to the Evites, Perhaps you are living within our land. How then can we make a covenant or treaty with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Then Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where do you come from? Verse 9. They said to him, Your servants have come from a far country that is far away because of the fame of the Lord your God. For we have heard the news about him and all the remarkable things that he did in Egypt. Verse 10. And everything that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who are beyond the Jordan to see on the king of Ishbon and to Og the king of Bashan who lived in Astoreth. Verse 11. So our elders and all the residents of our country said to us, take provisions for the journey and go to meet the sons of Israel and say to them, we are your servants, now make a covenant with us. This bread of ours was hot, fresh, when we took it along as a provision from our houses on the day we left, we come to you. Now, look, it is dry and has turned to crumbs. Verse 13. These wineskins which we feel were new, and look, they are split, our clothes and our sandals are worn out, because of the very long journey that we had to make. Verse 14. So the men of Israel took some of their own provisions and offered them in friendship and foolishly did not ask for the counsel of the Lord. Verse 15. Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant treaty with them to let them live and the leaders of the congregation of Israel swore an oath to them verse 16 it happened that three days after they had made a covenant with them the Israelites heard that they were actually their neighbors and they were living among them hey hey Tell your neighbor, wait, watch, and wait. I lift up my voice this morning. I pray for everyone that is listening to me. By the time you would have entered into marriage, your case will not end in regret. If there are parents that are listening to me this morning, whether you are on site or you are online, by the time your son, your daughter would have entered into marriage, may it not end in bringing tears out of your eyes. Father, we thank you this morning. 
Lord, as we examine your word together, we pray that, Lord, you will open our eyes and you will bless us through your word that in many years to come, this your children, everyone that is listening to me this morning, that is yet to marry, Lord, I pray that in many years to come, they will remember this day and they will give you praise. That in many years to come, when they remember this day, they will not bite their finger in sorrow. That in many years to come, when they will remember this day, and I known will not come out of their mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now I want you to first note this morning that what we call marriage is a covenant relationship. Marriage is a covenant relationship. Everybody say that together. Want to go? Marriage is a covenant relationship. I see some of you young people did not even come with Bible. And some of you don't even have writing materials. What is your pastor writing? Is he not married? He's married and he's still writing. You better learn. We don't open our eyes to learn many times. Pastor, thank you for being a good example. Listen. Marriage is a covenant relationship. How did I know? Open to the book of Malachi chapter 2. Let's go very quickly. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. And we'll read verse 14. Malachi chapter 2. And we'll read verse 14. Everybody, let's read it together. Why does he reject it? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet is she your marriage companion and the wife of what? Of your covenant. Everybody say after me, marriage is a covenant. Turn to somebody and tell the person, wait. Watch and wait. Before you enter into covenant of marriage. Say to another person. Wait. Watch. And wait. Before you enter into the covenant of marriage. Now you see that in Amalekai chapter 2 verse 14. The Lord said in clear terms. That. You ask why. And he said it is because the Lord has been the witness between you. And the wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously and he said yet she is your companion and she is the wife of your covenant marriage is a covenant i want you to note also that it is not just a covenant but it is a covenant of god it is not just a covenant but it is a covenant of God. Eh? Even you didn't bring Bible. No Bible, no writing materials. If I pastor your church, I will sack you. It is not just a covenant. It's a covenant of God. How did I know that? Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. We are going to read Proverbs chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. 
16 and 17. Everybody, let's read it together. To keep you from the immoral woman, from the seductress, with a flattering words, who leaves the companion, husband of her youth, and forgets what? The covenant of our God. Now, you know that Proverbs chapter 2 is talking about wisdom. He said, a married person needs wisdom because wisdom is what will preserve you that will prevent you from falling to the trap of an immoral woman. And what is wrong with the immoral woman? We are told in verse 17 that the immoral woman had forsaken her husband. King James calls that the guide of her youth. And it is because she has forgotten the covenant of our God. So marriage is a covenant. But marriage is not just a covenant. It is a covenant of God. Now somebody asked me, I said, why is it a covenant of God? It's a covenant of God because God is the principal witness to the covenant of marriage. God is the principal witness to the covenant of marriage. God is the, and that's what Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 says. He said, wherefore you say, and he said it is because the Lord is the witness between you and the partner of your youth. God is the principal witness. Everybody say that. Can you say it very loud? God is the principal witness to the covenant of marriage. Of course, all of us know that when we have wedding, there will always be plenty of witnesses. I think there was a wedding here yesterday. People came, plenty. Uh -huh. But you know, after the wedding, they'll go for reception. After the reception, all the witnesses, what will happen to them? Hmm? Including your father. And your mother, best lady, all of them will do what? They will go home. Tell your neighbor, there is a witness who does not go. No, say it to your neighbor very loud and clear. Even before you enter the hotel room where you want to do honeymoon, he has done what? He has entered there before you. What is his name? Ah, can I hear you very loud? And when we say he is the witness, who is a witness? If they say somebody is a witness, who is a witness? Eh? No, somebody should talk to us. Is there any law student here? Okay, they don't do law in Lautech. Oh God. <laughs> When they say, this is my witness. Who is a witness? A witness is someone who was there when something happens. Who can tell exactly when and how it happened. I say to you again, God is the principal witness. When does he become the witness? Everybody say after me, God becomes the witness from the day of first contact. No, you are not saying it loud. When does he become the witness? Yeah. The day that man met you and said, um, Eunice. Eunice. E-U-N-I-C-E. -E. And you too, you are saying, ah, ah. <laughs> excuse me, what's the problem? <laughs> La be igi. Oh, Rumbo. <laughs> listen, listen now. You know, there's no other person there. 
And he said, actually, um, there's something I've been trying to tell you. And you say, eh? <laughs> he said, well, actually, I don't know how to say it. And you are saying, well, say it anyhow. <laughs> um, actually, each time I see you, <laughs> please who is there eh? so I want you to understand that from the day one of contact even when there is no other person there God is the witness So, if you understand now that marriage is a covenant, if you understand that it is a covenant of God, if you understand that God is the principal witness, and you understand that he becomes the principal witness from when? From the day one of the contact. Such that if after two years I become unfaithful to you and you know ladies can cry because of that and you are saying the first day you came something was telling me that you are fake ah, oh god I was so stupid and then the man said what did I tell you the first day I came I didn't tell you anything you said ah even though there was nobody there God will judge why are we bringing God into it because from day one he is what the witness and he is not just the witness he is the principal witness because of this foundation that I have laid, I see the Lord asking me to tell you that before you enter into the covenant of marriage, wait. Wait means don't rush. Pause a little before you take that decision. Wait. I also hear the Lord say, Watch. Don't act out of impulse. Don't act foolishly. Watch. And I heard the Lord saying, Weigh every matter seriously before you enter. We have read in the book of Joshua chapter 9 that tells us a story between the Gibeonites and the Israelites. I want you to look at that scripture that we read and if you look at it from verse 1 take your own Bible if you have one if you look at it from verse 1 up to verse 16 that we read, how many times were the Gibeonites repeating, make a covenant with us? I want you to look at it carefully and give it to me. How many times? Make a covenant with us. Check from verse 1 up to verse 16. If you carry King James, you will see make a treaty with us. Make a covenant with us. Make a treaty with us. How many times did they repeat that? Check out from your Bible. Between verse 1 and verse 16. How many times did the Gibeonite keep repeating? Make a covenant with us. Verse 6, 
What did they say? Verse 6, everybody read it. Went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal. They said to him and the Israelites, We have come from a distant country. Make a covenant with us. Verse 7. Those people now said, How can you say we should make a covenant with us? All right. So, when did they repeat that again? Verse 11. Our elders and all those living in our country said to us, Take provisions for your journey. Go and meet them and say to them, We are your servants. Make a treaty with us. When again did they say it? So they kept repeating. Make a covenant with us. Make a covenant with us. Let me turn to somebody that is yet to marry that is sitting close to you. And first say to the person, don't allow anybody to pressurize you into marriage. <laughs> say it to somebody very loud and clear. <laughs> say it to the ladies in particular. I don't know how many of you are seated here this morning. That guy has been coming again and again. And all he's asking for is make a covenant with me. Don't be rushed by anyone. I know how guys can mount pressure. And you are saying, ah, uh -uh, but you came last week for many time. The guy said, well, you see, I don't have time. I don't have time because um, um, there are some other, I mean, don't lose your opportunity. Tell him, go for the other opportunities. Don't allow anybody to put you under pressure. The first thing I saw as the Gibeonites were trying to bring the Israelites into covenant was that they were mounting this pressure. Make a covenant with us. Make a covenant with us. And peradventure, the people of Israel do not understand the import of covenant. So the first matter the Lord said I should stress to you is that you should not be pressurized. Don't allow anybody to push you. Why must you not be pushed? Don't be pushed because once you enter into the covenant, you are bound. And you are banned for life. Tell your neighbor, once you enter into the covenant, you are bound. For how long? For life. For life. How did I know that you are bound for life? First Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians. How did I know that you are banned for life? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's take from King James, verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 27. Everybody, let's read it together. What does it say? Are you bound? 1 Corinthians 7, verse 27. What did they give to us? Read verse 27, everybody. Are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. As I give us King James. Are you bound unto a wife? Everybody say it. Seek not to be loosed. 
Are you loose from a wife? Don't seek a wife. What does that mean? Eh? Once they bind you, don't seek to be loosed. Don't seek to be loosed means what? Don't seek divorce. But if you say, well, Reverend, Toba Shomoti Yini, Chemani Kokusibe, you want me to die? When there is life, there is hope, I just have to live. I need my life. I need my life. God said, no problem. Once you leave, you become Madam Mobolu Waduro. Don't seek another one. The day you are tired of being alone, go back to your home. Are you bound unto a wife? Don't seek a wife. Are you loosed from a wife? Then don't seek another one. You are bound into the covenant for life. So don't be pushed. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be rushed by anybody. When somebody keeps coming and saying, uh-uh, you know, because what I'm telling you, I don't want you to disobey God. Because I fasted and I prayed on the 29th of May. I saw you. Tell him, me, I have not seen you. Go and wait till I do what? Till I also see you. Because it may not be me that you saw. The Bible says that even the devil can transform himself to an angel of light. Maybe it was one demon that took my image. Wait. He comes back again and he says, you see, delay is dangerous. The Bible says, if you hear his voice, do not add in your heart. I am the one that God has chosen for your life. Tell him. That scripture is very clear. He said today, if you hear his voice, I have not heard his voice. <laughs> I'm not hardening my heart. Don't be rushed. Don't be pushed. Why did I say that? Did you see how the Israelites entered into covenant with the Gibeonites? And the scripture told us they did not ask from God. Can we read verse 15 of that Joshua chapter 9? Verse 15. Verse 15. Okay, let's read verse 14. I think we should read verse 14. Everybody, let's read it. One, two, go. The Israelites took of their victuals, but did not ask from God. They did not ask for direction from God. Let me tell your neighbor, wait till you hear from God. Say to your neighbor very loud and clear, wait till you hear from God. They could not wait. They rushed. And they entered into regret. I want to pray for somebody that is listening to me. Your case will not end in regret. Yeah. Number two thing I want you to note. Beware of pretensions. Beware of pretensions. Or if you just simply say beware of pretense. Beware of pretense. When the people of Gibeon 
when they came to the Israelites, what were they asking them to do with them? Everybody talk to me. Make a covenant with us. That's the reason why we are here. But look at verse 4 of your Bible. Verse 4. Verse 4. Everybody, let's read verse 4 together. King James says, They walk willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took all sacks upon their asses and wine bottles that were hold and rent and bound up. Listen. Everybody said they walk willingly. And they made as Eve. Everybody said they made as Eve. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, beware of those who are making as Eve. They make as Eve. As if they are children of God. As if they are born again. As if they make as Eve. Can we read that from the New Living Translation? How did the New Living put it? NLT. New Living, can you give to us very quickly? How did they put it in the New Living Translation, that verse 4? They resorted to deception. Our brothers are not fast. Where are you? They don't have New Living. This verse 4, NLT, somebody read it. They resorted to deception. Huh? To save themselves. They sent ambassadors to Joshua. Uh huh. They resorted to what did they call it? Deception. Prophesy to two people that are yet to marry. Just prophesy to them. You will not get into the trap of a deceiver. <laughs> prophesy to two people. <laughs> they resorted to deception. When the Bible says in King James, they made us eat. That the reason why they have not allowed their parents to come and visit them is because you are not real. Your mom said, we want to come and greet you. Ah, we are always busy. Lecture, even in the night. <laughs> because you are not proud of your mom. Be real. Don't deceive somebody into marriage. Don't deceive somebody into a covenant. Be real. As many of you as are here looking at me, that you are living a fake life. You deceive everybody. You need to make up your mind this morning. I want to be real. I want to be genuine. I want it to be that whatever I say I am, when people check me in and out, they will find me to be what I said I am. That's why I said, watch! It was unfortunate that the Israelites did not watch. Not only that they did not watch, they did not weigh every word that the Gibeonites were saying, they did not weigh them. They just played foolishly into their hands. That's why I love the way the Amplified put that verse 14. That verse 14. Give it to us from the Amplified translation of Joshua chapter 9. Verse 14. I think we read something, was it verse 14 that we read? 
Where have we read? Okay, everybody read it. One, two, go. Took some of their own provisions, offered them in friendship, and foolishly did not ask for the counsel of the Lord. Don't your neighbor that is yet to marry and say, don't be foolish. Don't act in foolishness. So don't forget first on this issue of beware of deception I said you must be real. Second one under it said to your neighbor watch against deceivers. Tell your neighbor again watch against deceivers. Yes you need to watch. And to watch means that you must look beneath the surface. I love John chapter 7 verse 24 when I read it from the New Living Translation. John chapter 7 verse 24. I love the words of Jesus. In that John 7 24. New Living Translation, somebody that is there. Look beneath the surface so that you can judge correctly. Turn to your neighbor and say, look beneath the surface. Say it to your neighbor very loud and clear. Look, look. You see all those surface information? They said, this is our bread. It was hot when we left our house. This is our shoe. It is new when we left the house. But because we have traveled a very long journey, that's why everything has become like this. Unfortunately, the people of Israel did not look beyond the surface. They just took the information like that, hook, line, and sinker, and then they enter into trouble. Can I please beg you? Look! Look beneath the surface of every information that you are hearing so that your case does not end in regret. I've had different things. I have also seen different things. And I have a charge this morning to please warn you. A person may come to you and say different things. Please look beneath the surface. I think it was in in Delta where a lady came and she was crying because she got married and it was in the night of the wedding towards the evening rather that she discovered that she married a mad person. A young man that they use drug to package him. They had very short courtship, about six months. But during that period of six months, the guy had told her, the only day you can see me is on Thursdays. Every other day I'm always very busy. So that Thursday, he would have used his drug. And when the lady comes, the only thing the lady knew about him that she was telling everybody was, um, my friends is very gentle, is so cool, he hardly talks after the wedding. In the evening, as the drug was waning out, where the guy was sitting down, he suddenly did like this. Hmm? So the lady said, Ah, why are you playing like a kid? Then the guy did, yeah. For she knew. And it was 
was while she was crying, crying, some people came and said, didn't you know him? They packaged him. Look beneath the surface. Some parents are here. Some of them will tell you that in those days, people don't marry anyhow. They will do thorough investigation. It's in our days we don't investigate. Even if your parents want to investigate, you tell them, ah, I don't know what investigation you are making. Because I said I prayed. I prayed, I prayed. Christ Jesus answered me. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. Lord Jesus answered me. He brought me this young man. I pray, I pray. <laughs> they said, eh, let us investigate. Look beneath the surface that you may judge rightly. We are handling a matter of another lady that was crying because after marriage, I remember the day she called me, she said, Sir, I've married my husband now for two years. And we have slept together only three times. He will leave the house for one week, two weeks. Even those three times we slept together, it was as if I forced him. I said, what is the problem? She said, when I stood on his neck, I want to know what the challenge is. It was then he said, didn't you know you married a gay? I spend my time with my gay partners. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy said, stop crying. You either live with it or you get out. And he went into the room and took the wedding certificate and put fire on it and burn it. Said, I've married you. You either live with it or you check out. Look beneath the surface. My father is a banker. Did you cross check? His father is a driver in a bank. <laughs> Oh, is somebody listening to me? Look beneath the surface. Don't just take surface information. Somebody took you to the house of the parents and said, you know, that's our house. Meanwhile, they rented it. Why can I not say that we rented this place? Must I tell you that we are the one that built it? Watch! Don't rush. I see people frustrated in marriage because they did not wait. They did not watch. And they did not weigh every information that was given to them. 
My heart pray for somebody here this morning. Your case will not end in regret. Yeah. Your matter will not end in tears. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So they said, all these things that we brought, they were new when we came unto you. Can I also ask you, as I say one last thing for this morning, cross-check from the elders. Cross-check from the elders. So when I say watch, when I say weigh, one of the ways to watch and to weigh before you enter into the covenant is for you to cross check from the elders. If you look at that Joshua chapter 9, I read from verse 9 to verse 11. Joshua 9, 9 to 11. And they said unto him, From a far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we are the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, that were beyond Jordan, to see on king of Ishbon, and to all king of Bashan, which was at Astorate. Everybody read verse 11 together. Our elders and all the inhabitants of the land, they speak to us and they said, take victuals with you for the journey. Go to meet them. Say to them, we are your servants. Therefore, enter into covenant with us. Everybody say, our elders. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor now. Tell your neighbor before you agree to marry anybody. Find out who are the elders and cross check from the elders. Find out. And when I talk about elders, I'm talking about two calibers of elders. And I want you to note it before we go to prayer. Everybody say family elders and spiritual elders. Can we say it again? Family elders and spiritual elders. Look at your neighbor that is yet to marry. Look at your, don't look at me. Look at your neighbor that is yet to marry. Tell the person, don't marry anyone. Who does not have a spiritual mentor? Eh? Say it again. So when somebody comes to propose to you, ask the person, who is your shepherd? Who is your pastor? If he say, eh, Reverend Sholalawa, ask him, does he know you? If he say, ah, one day, mommy will be gone. <laughs> Jesus said, I know my sheep. Because in a church like this, there will be so many people that are just coming. They are hiding. Because they say, yeah, I like that environment. I like that church environment. And then in that church, they said, if somebody had a problem, they used to help people. So we go there. And he doesn't have the life of God. Who is your spiritual elder? That if I have a challenge with you, who will I report you to? Who is the person that if I tell, who will call you at once and say, Ronke, see me now. And you'll be shaking. What will you do? Three days. 
after we had entered into the covenant and may I announce to you this morning that once you enter into the covenant of marriage you are bound somebody came and said but sir he deceived me he deceived me he deceived me I said well sorry for you there are only very few deceptions that can cancel marriage very very few if I just mentioned them very few Number one is if they discover that the person is a minor who deceived you. If somebody is below age 18 and then it's after wedding you discover the wedding will be cancelled. The marriage will be cancelled. Number two, if you marry an impotent person and you get home and when you undress yourself and the person says, look, oh go on, what did you have to do? Once And then second day, you want to hug your husband. The man says, "Bei hamara rewo, wo lo sa ati loru, esuba ondo dewa." Ah ah. And you say, "Say, yo juman, yo juman, you woman do dewa ni." And then you do that, you do that. Now, you see, in, in the principle of marriage, they will say that that marriage is void ab initio. It is void. So it's a void marriage. It's not even a voidable marriage. It's a void marriage. Number three, if somebody gets married and they discover that the degree of consanguity is high, in essence, okay, on your body. I don't mind your family. No, there's no, there's no your body. <laughs> if they discover that the family closeness, and uh, that's what they call concern. <laughs> uh -huh. Because you are not supposed to marry a family member, somebody who is a near kin. If it is discovered, the certificate will be cancelled. What again can make marriage to be void if they discover that there is an existing legal bond? Okay, somebody has been married to another person before and the person hid it from you and then you have been joined and they discover it, it will be cancelled. All those ones, they don't call it divorce because you are not divorcing. The fact is that in the beginning, the marriage is not correct. But if it is that, as a driver of Gakani, second day of the wedding, one sake, Moambe, Pematu Eda, Ola Muligba. All those ones, sorry for you. <laughs> You are already inside the marriage. If it is that he told me that his parents live in Abuja and only for us after the wedding. I say about the egg and you are crying. All those ones does not invalidate marriage. Yo. That's why. It is your responsibility to do your thorough waiting, thorough watching, and thorough weighing of every word that is spoken to you. Lift up your hands everywhere. Okay, rise up on your feet as you lift up your hand. Come on, we are saying, Father. Come on, say, Father. Every satanic arrangement. To lead me into regret. To lead me into error. Today, I cancel that arrangement. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. I cancel it. I cancel it. Three days 
after they had entered into the covenant they discovered that they were deceived hey is somebody say lord i will not fall to the hand of deceivers every deceiver that may come my way the lord will expose them the lord will expose them are you praying this about your life it's about your life. It's not about any other person. People are getting married. People are crying. Some parents are crying because of the marriage of their children. Because they have been deceived. Somebody saying, Lord, I will not be deceived every deception that the devil has arranged against me lord expose it you are praying leba bo shekata ya balaya re pro sopani mongrele in tosca lord jesus this is about my life this is about my life Oh, rebo bo 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 shake him and gralaba. Every deceiver that the enemy may bring across my pathway, expose them, Lord. Every wolf in sheep clothing, expose them, Lord. My marital life will not end in regret. If there is a parent that is praying, please pray for your daughters. If there is a parent praying with us, pray for your sons. I shall not weep over my children. I will not weep over their marital life. My sons, my daughters will not end in the hand of deceivers. Are you praying? Majeke de gele mo supra gabala boske ponia mangreles le sotoria le mambra gala boske nemos le pate yege nemo supra gala bos. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Lord, I will not be a deceiver. I will not be a deceiver. I will be real. I will be real. I want to be a genuine Christian, a genuine believer. I will not be fake. I will not fake anybody. Labosh ke teke ni masapra gabaya. Leke torobo supra gabalo gabo sapranea. Yay! Lord, I want to be real. I want to be real. I want to be real. Deliver me from every pretension. Every pretension. Every pretension. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Open your eyes and look at me, please. As we pray this last prayer. Why must you become a problem to somebody's destiny? Why must you be in this kind of fellowship and you are just a pretender? Your life is not real. Oh, there's a need to pray. There's a need to cry to God. I don't want to be fake. I want to be real. I said, of fake, fake people in the church. I go to fellowships. I see faking. I remember a lady called me and was crying. She said, sir, I know that if the trumpet sound now, I will not go to heaven. I said, no. You, sister's coordinator, who just graduated, you are doing youth service, sister's coordinator of a fellowship. Why will you not go to heaven? 
She said, sir, if the trumpet sound, I will not make heaven. I said, why? She said, you know I am in a relationship. I said, yes. In relationship with the Bible study secretary of your fellowship. You graduated together. She said, yes. He said, but sir, the two of us were just faking it. Fake! I said, I don't understand. She said, every time we meet, we have sex. Even when we now meet to say what we are doing is wrong, let us confess to the Lord. Let us repent as we hold our hands and we are praying. Lord, we are sorry. We turn around and gone astray. He said, We do it again and again. Excuse me, why do you want to die fake? That the church will think you have made heaven. And hell is rejoicing over your life. We want to plead with God. Lord, deliver me from every pretension. I want to be real. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord. You have no business with any other person. Deliver me, Lord. I want to be real. I want to be real. Deliver me from every pretension. I want to be genuine. I want to be real. Ha! Lord, I want to be real. The Bible says that the Lord knoweth those who are his. I can deceive the church. I can deceive God. I want to be real. I want to be genuine. Holy Spirit, walk upon me. Holy Spirit, walk up. Is somebody praying this morning? I want to be real. Every form of pretension it out of my life whatever nature whatever character whatever attitude that I carry that heaven is saying no this is not our nature Lord deliver me from it thank you eternal father blessed be your name Lord In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. While every eyes are closed, every and we may be in perfect silence before the Lord. Are you here this morning? And as you are hearing the voice of the Lord, that the Lord is saying, Be real! Be real! And you are saying, Lord, I want to be real. I want to be real. I want to be a genuine believer. Pure. I want to be real. Walk upon my life. Change me in and out. I want to be real. If that is your cry, just lift up your right hand to him. Place your left hand upon your heart. I have a burden to pray together with you. You are saying, Lord, I just want to be real. Every eyes closed. You don't have any business looking at anybody. You and God now. Lord, I want to be real. I want heaven to be able to say yes. This one is our home. It's very genuine. 
This one is real. Here am I, Lord. I yield my life to you. I want to be real. I want to be real. Say to him, I want to be real. Lord, I open up my heart to you. I want to tell you God is doing something in your life today that will last a lifetime. I want to be real. I want to be genuine. No deception. No faking of anything. I want to be real. This life, Lord, I yield it to you. Take it, Lord. Take it, Lord. I want to be real. I want to be real. While every eyes are closed. So we solemnly take the song. Change me. Change me, Lord. Solemnly. Very solemnly. No instrument. I want to be real. If you are sincere with it, as all eyes are closed. As a reason up your right hand, please come to the altar. I want to pray together with you. Change me, change me, change me, change me, Lord. Change me. Change me. Change me. Change me, Lord. I need your change, Lord. Change me. Change me. Change me, change me, Lord. Change me, change me, change me, change me, Lord. Everybody sing Change me, I need your change, Lord. Change me, change me, Lord. Change me, change me, Lord. I need your change, Lord. Change me, change me, Lord. Change me, Father, change me, change me, Lord. I need a change, Lord. Change me, Father, change me, change me, Lord. Change me, change. Still there, and the Holy Spirit is saying to you, son, daughter, be real, be real. And you are saying, Lord, you are a man. Don't wait for the next person. Change me, Lord. Change me. I want to be real, Lord.
church that is without spot and without wrinkle or any such thing. Lord, look at your sons and daughters who are presenting themselves to you this morning. Father, I bring them to the throne of grace. And I ask, O oh Lord, in every area where their life needs a change, a turnaround, that we make them to be real and genuine, that heaven can stand for them. Lord, do that miracle now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that Lord this step they are taking this morning oh God we bring them to the same point wherein Jesus had always stand that you will be able to say concerning them this is my beloved daughter this is my beloved son. I am pleased with him. I am pleased with her. May that become their testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is identified with your life that our father is not pleased with, I ask that now the Lord will bring a transformation in that area of your life in the name of Jesus that ends forth whether you are in public or you are in private whether you are where people are seeing you or you are alone where nobody is there your life will be pleasing unto the Lord 24-7 in the name of Jesus. Amen. The mark of divine approval come upon your life. Amen. The mark of divine acceptance come upon your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.